we are looking at the Gigabyte Gaming A16 for 4K playback, 6K playback, and 8K playback. We're going to be looking at Sony A7S III footage for the 4K. We got 422 10-bit footage at H.264 and H.265. We have 30 frames per second, 50 frames per second, and 120 frames per second. Then we're going to jump into Photoshop and Lightroom Classic, do a 99 raw photo files opening, see how long that takes, and then test out the AI into noise to see how long that process takes as well. The first thing we've got keyed up here, of course, is our 4K footage. This is H.264, and this is 422. And what we are looking at is the playback. And of course, um, this is going to play back really smoothly, but I always like to kick things off with this resolution just to show you what this device is capable of. Smooth playback for H.264, 422, 4K footage, um, 4K timeline, and we're using the resolution from the footage to, uh, to inform the timeline of this specific playback. And you see zero drop frames in the first 20 seconds, and that'll just continue to play back smoothly um, with very little fan noise. I'm going to click over here and show you the fan noise. About 43 to 44 decibels of fan noise on that. Um, so quiet, definitely fan noise present, but nothing loud or crazy. Okay, the next thing I'm going to take a look at is 50 frames per second. This is going to be our, uh, I'm going to change the sequence settings. Yep, right there. This is going to be our H.265 footage. Pull up the media properties so you can see that. Let me go there. Drop frame indicator is in view. And we're going to go ahead and click playback. So you can see 50 frames per second. H.265, 420, and you can see smooth playback, zero drop frames, nice crisp footage. Of course, compliments of Lori from Tech Notice sending me over this specific footage. And then, of course, I'll have 6K B-RAW and 8K B-RAW coming up here in a minute, as well as some 6K red footage if you're interested in that. And then at that point, we'll jump into the Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Gigabyte Gaming A16, you can head down in the description below, click that link if you do make a purchase. I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. So we're getting a little bit of fan noise here. How should I say a little bit more fan noise, about 51 decibels of fan noise there. And I'm going to go ahead now and switch over to my 120 frames per second. Jump up here. There's the footage. Pull it over. Change sequence settings. I'm going to go ahead and right click that so you can see the media properties. And H.26. I always struggle to find this, H.264, 10-bit, 422. And then this is going to be where we get some heaviness in the footage. So immediately dropping frames. This is some very heavy, robust footage. Scoot this over so I can pull the drop frame indicator over so you can see that clearly with the footage, with the media properties. All right, so now that we're running, going to get this going, take a sip of my coffee. And I'm going to go ahead and pull... Additional. So lots of drop frames here. Let's go ahead and start over again. Here you got these fans ramping up. I'm going to switch over as... About 58 decibels of fan noise. And for this, we are running an RTX 4050 with the Ryzen, no, no, that's not the Ryzen, forgive me, the RTX 4050 with the Intel i7 13620H. 30 seconds in, 3,300 drop frames. So quite an extensive amount of drop frames. Now, let's say you want to make this effective. Let's drop down to one-fourth quality and see if we can play back this with the minimal drop frames. Drop pretty quickly right there. Still dropping 200 frames in the first five seconds. Let's go to eighth quality. Play it back. Pull it back. Okay, held off there for a moment. But you can still see, very choppy. Um, this is not something 
that would be easily smoothly played back and edited in a timeline uh, with a computer of this nature. Now, is it possible? Sure, it's definitely possible, um, but it will be a very jumpy experience. It will not be the most enjoyable experience. I definitely recommend either the Gigabyte Aero 16X that played back this footage at much more reasonable um, a much more reasonable drop frame, much less jumpiness, or the Gigabyte Oros Master. That one dropped very few frames for this footage, which was actually quite exciting. And that was at full quality. This is an eighth quality. And you can see we're still dropping a lot of frames very quickly on this footage and it's very jumpy. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to 6K B-RAW. We're gonna locate some footage here. Okay, here we go. Where's it? There we go. There's the folder I'm looking for. Okay, so we'll just cancel that because I don't think that's actually necessary. Yep, okay, we're good. Here's the footage. All right, and we're going to go back to the beginning of the timeline. Forgive me for not having that view on. Just switching this live. And here we go. 6KB RAW, full quality. Let's see how it handles this. Pretty jumpy. 100 frames, 140 frames. 12 frames in the first five seconds. So you can see the 6K B-RAW footage is more usable than the 120 frames per second, even at full quality, but you can still see some jumpiness. And then media, oh, media offline, that's this right there. So that's not the 8K, there we go. So actually fairly smooth. 20 drop frames. Let's go ahead and bump down to just half quality and see if we can get zero drop frames. So even at half quality, far smoother experience. So definitely 6K B-RAW is capable on this device. Um, the 120 frames per second of the 4K is very heavy footage, a lot of frame rate happening. So you're gonna actually be safer with a 24 frames per second on 6K B-RAW than you would 120 frames on 4K. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over. That was at half quality, zero drop frames, 30 seconds, looking good. Let's go ahead and switch over to 6K RED footage. Um, that's fine. The footage, yep, the footage is in place. Those are just some extra B-roll clips that I have that I can remove really quickly. Here we go. Okay. So here we go. Full quality playback, and we're going to go ahead and click play on the timeline. Drop frames right off the bat, 26 frames in the first three seconds. See how we're doing here as we move forward and let it keep playing here for a moment. Getting a little jumpy there. You can see as this indicator is coming along, it's a little choppy. You see the timeline is choppy 300 frames in the first about 15 seconds so we can see choppiness for 6k on full quality in the red footage just like the b raw okay let's pull back and we're now at half quality half quality seeming smooth so far zero drop frames first five seconds uh, let's go ahead and check some fan noise for you while we're watching this go through good 57 and a half decibels of fan noise, jumping back over. Zero drop frames in the first 20 seconds. So 6K, red footage, B-RAW, definitely capable uh, at half quality, spot on, looking good. Okay, now I wanna go ahead and switch over to the Lightroom Classic test. We're gonna import 99 raw photo files into Lightroom Classic, and we're going to see how fast that happens. Uh, a good, nice middle of the road time is gonna be about anywhere from 15, to 20 seconds to import those raw photo files. And then lower uh, lower time frames are gonna be on those faster Intel Core Ultra 9, 275HX, or RTX 5080s. Uh, so that's where we're gonna be looking at. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I don't wanna open that. Try Lightroom Classic again. Oh, here we go, it opened up. All right, hopefully I didn't confuse it because I tried to open it again. All right. Kind of overworking it. Fan speeds are coming down now. See, it looks like we're sitting at about at 50 and dropping. So that's nice. You can see we're still loading up here. Good. I'm going to reach over to my folder here, go to my raw photo files, clear out all this extra. And then we're going to go ahead and open these up. Grab, grab that there. Yep. Pull this over import these 
And then I'm gonna pull my timer up. So that's available to us. I'm gonna actually hit the power button and swap over so you can see my timer. And now I'm going to fish loading up, almost done. Okay, click import, start the timer. <clears throat> Nice. Ooh, nice. 16 seconds. That is fantastic. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is 16.7. Next thing we're going to do is enhance this one with some denoise. Got to click it again. So it pulls up that denoise filter. Go. All right. There's a denoise filter. 16.7. for the Whoa. Raw photo open. And okay. Switch that. There we go. And we're going to click denoise. See, there we go. Coming across the timeline. Let's type in that 16.7. All right, get ready to stop it. Oh, oh I missed it. It's like 18.2. Okay. So that took a little bit longer than I expected. 18.2. And now lastly, we're going to switch over to, yes, I'm going to quit this. We're going to right click this. Nope, can't right click all of them. Right click this photo here. Open with Photoshop. Reset the timers. That was in 18.2. Good. And the last one we're going to do. Perfect. Got it opened up. Get started. Going to right click this one. Whoop. Find our enhance feature. And we're going to click and get it rolling. There we go. And remember, if you're curious about the exact pricing of this model, uh, when I'm recording this video, it's $830 for this laptop. Solid price point. Uh, but if you want to check the live pricing, links are in the description below. Okay, 13.4. All right, not bad at all for these scores. Man, a pretty snappy laptop, being that this is an $830 laptop on sale. I want to say around $875, $880, not on sale. So if you're looking for a laptop that handles 4K very well, um, the 120 frames per second, I'm not going to highly recommend. But for 4K, 6K as a whole, the laptop handles it very well. $830. You can't beat that. Remember, links are in the description below if you're curious want to check the live price. And I have a full review of this model. I have a full roundup video with between three gigabyte models that I think are really great bang for bucks right now. So you definitely check out that video. Click or tap the screen. But otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope these videos help you with your buying decision, and I'll see you here in the next one.